All right, welcome to the weekend video. This is Ender here. It's been a while. Um, I am going to go through the markets from an Elliott Wave perspective, as usual. And uh, hey, see what you think. Get over to, over to bullwaves.org. That's where I hang out. That's my little part of the internet. Um, check out bullwaves.org and then uh, join the website and see you for nightly Elliott Wave, Elliot Wave analysis. That's what I do. That's that's my thing. I do nightly Elliott Wave analysis for the members of the website. And if I seem tired and uh, a little bit unkempt this morning, that's, uh, yeah, there's been a lot going on. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Okay, so this is the pattern in um, Euro dollar. This is what I'm working with here. We have an A wave down, B wave up, and I'm looking for a five wave decline in wave C. Uh, into wave two. I'm looking for a second wave to climb back to around 10, between 10, let's say three and 101 to complete wave C of two. So this is, uh, this should be five waves down. It should be one, two, three, four, five. At least right now, the pattern seems to be coming back into, um, let's say, into focus again. Um, this week we're kind of tracking this C wave up. And it seemed to extend, you know, well, obviously. But second waves tend to kind of retrace much further than you would like them to. But if this is a second wave, it has kind of completed its cycle now. And um, the action seems to be turning lower again into wave one. It's definitely more impulsive to the downside now. Uh, look for five waves down. Looking for a break of that A wave high. So that's 107.80. If we get a break of 107.80, then I'll be uh, interested enough to see um, wave three down next week. Okay, that's uh, the idea there. Uh, cable has been a little bit more subdued off the top here recently. Still think that this is a B wave top. Uh, so it's a pretty similar pattern to um, similar pattern to uh, Euro dollar. There's another way of looking at this too. You could actually go ABC down in A, ABC up in B. And then we're starting wave C down. Um, we have some critical support to break first before uh, confirming either of those, let's say, interpretations. So that's the A wave top. We've got ABC down in A there, <clears throat> ABC up in B, an extended wave five of C. And, and now we seem to be rolling over. But for the moment, I suppose this pattern is still up in the air. Um, I want to see you know, I want to see more declines. I want to see a break of that A wave top there. So that 125.45 is what I've been looking at this week uh, for confirmation that uh, wave one is underway. But once that happens, we'd look for a lower high and then an acceleration lower into wave in wave three. So wave one, two, and then acceleration wave three. That's gonna that's gonna wait until late next week if it happens next week. Okay. Um, dollar yen four hour count dollar yen. We were looking for an extended power in wave three. Looks like we're pretty much, well, we're close to that right now. Um, well, I don't think we're quite finished wave three in red here, or sorry, wave three in uh, green just yet, but uh, we're very close to that now. That's the, it's it's ticking all the boxes. You know, where the last video, I think we were, I was a little bit kind of, um, what's the word, unsure whether this extension would happen and then, but here we are, it's extended. So wave count pretty much confirmed. Um, the extension higher today has, I think more or less completed wave three of five. So this is wave three pink of wave five blue. Um, we probably should correct lower, probably back towards that wave three high again. So back towards about 142 in wave four and then rally again in wave five. That's the idea here. Whether it happens or not is another thing, but it looks like we've got wave one and two done, uh, an extension in wave three, more or less done, wave four and wave five left. So we've hit the target for wave three, that was 143.44, that's what we were looking at. 162% extension of wave one, done. And we've come off the boil today. So we'll see whether this fourth wave continues in a corrective pattern <clears throat> over the next couple of days and then we look higher into wave five next week. Okay, so this is uh, oh, sorry, the Dow. Count the Dow. This very elongated 
uh, elongated, out of size, out of character, out of whack. <laughs> um, second wave correction. So three waves up in A, three down in B, and then one, two, three, four, five. Some sort of um, a wedge pattern wave C, it seems, because we've got an overlap, overlap there between the wave four, wave one high, and the wave four low. So it's a terminal pattern, it seems. This rally has is, is, has kind of marked itself as a terminal pattern. The reason being that overlap within the pattern. So um, no matter, we broke to a slightly new high in wave C above the wave A high, and we've come off the boil now. Um, the decline so far has been, you know, a little bit lackluster. Uh, but for the moment, I'm going to stick with it. Let's go to the daily count here and see. Still holding a lower high but below wave two. I, you know, the extended bullish nature, I suppose, has brought us to this point. Um, I do want to see, I really want to see a rollover. <laughs> no matter how much I want to see it, but it's, it's up to the market to actually do it. Um, <clears throat> we shall see soon enough. Uh, I've been looking for a break of this previous fourth wave low here. So it's kind of like a pivot point. It seems to be a pretty, um, significant pivot point within the previous pattern that's alliteration there for you pivot point within the previous pattern so we've got a high here within the corrective wave b we've got uh, with wave b fail below that level we've got this internal high as be a third of a third wave topping out and we've got this fourth wave low so i've got four more or less points within this um 33 7 80 let's call it level the market has fallen to that level now, so it it behooves if this is continuation rally, if there's further upside here, it behooves the market now to actually find support here and turn higher um, in an impulsive fashion. In an impulsive fashion, um, if we continue down lower, if we start taking out these previous highs, I would especially mark this wave one high here. So this thirty three two. 60, call it. Um, if that wave one high breaks, then that would rule out the continuation pattern, I think. And I, at that point, I'd be much more, let's say, comfortable looking lower. At the moment, I'm kind of sitting on the fence here. Actually, the um, the S and P pattern is is more conclusive than the Dow at the moment. We'll get to that in a few minutes. Okay, for the moment. Um, let's say, cross my fingers and toes, that this is actually it. Let's move on. <clears throat> Gold has come, let's say, back down into my territory again. <clears throat> After a corrective few weeks, sideways, uh, I think we've completed that B wave and we've started moving lower impulsively again into wave C. So we're looking at three waves down in wave A. That will complete the initial move in wave two. So it's going to be, I think it's going to be a long, drawn out decline this summer, to be quite honest. Um, three down in A towards the end of June, probably three up in B for July, and then probably some sort of uh, acceleration lower in wave C towards the end of the summer, August, you know, end of July, August area. <clears throat> so wave two, I think, will probably complete between 1800 and 1690. So in that level there. Um, once we get down to about 17, 50 again. Uh, I'm going to be uh, turning seriously bullish. But for the moment, we're kind of continual, continuing along in this second wave pattern, uh, completing the initial move down in wave A pretty soon. Let's get to the hourly count. There's the wave A low. Here's this running flat wave B. And then what seems to be a, a decline into wave C beginning right now. Um, the I was saying last night that um, this second wave correction is a little bit lackluster. It's a little bit, let's say, less than what you might expect. So maybe we're going to form a lower, a lower low and a uh, and a, a more substantial lower high in wave two. So this could be an extended wave one of C, and then maybe we'll correct higher in wave two back towards that 1937, 1940 level before accelerating lower in wave uh, three. That's up for grabs at the moment. Uh, it really depends on what happens uh, over the next few hours, I think. If we continue correcting higher, then this is the count. If we start, uh, you know, 
stepping lower again, crashing lower, uh, that'll suggest that wave three is actually underway. So we'll see how that goes. Um, up in up for grabs at the moment whether wave two is done or not. So for next week, it looks like we're going to continue lower into wave C. Uh, I would look for an extended decline in wave three, probably back towards about 1860, um, a correction, and then a four and a fifth wave. Uh, so by th I'll say by the end of next week, wave C will be done. And then we will look for a, a return higher into, um, into wave B, that larger degree wave B. If I get a, a Fibonacci grid here for the moment, we take it from the wave B high. This is the extension of wave one, or sorry, of wave A. Take it from the wave B high and extend it lower again. It actually suggests we get a low in wave C around 1819. So anywhere between 1850 and 1819, I think, is, is where we'd look for wave C to complete. Uh, that'll be wave C of A. Okay, let's move on. Crude oil has been uh, I think probably moving in line with the main wave count this week. Um, we have been kind of speculating whether uh, speculating whether wave two was done at this internal high, 74.36, let's say. Um, we definitely got an impulsive looking move lower and a corrective move to the lower high this week. So we have a, a possible bearish impulse wave and then an, a continuation lower. So we've got we've got the right price action to suggest that a third wave is beginning um but without confirmation yet so i suppose what i'm trying to say here is yeah, this this alternate second wave is is still a possibility uh i haven't thrown it out just yet but we are definitely moving in favor of the main wave count now so uh keep that under your hats uh, i think we're probably coming to the end of a, a wave one decline here and we'll probably start moving higher in wave two. So this will be wave one and two, all with third wave. So if you can see there, we've got a second wave. We've got, let's say, the wave two in green done. An initial move lower. That's probably a wedge pattern in wave one blue. Three waves up in wave two blue. And then we've got wave one and two to begin wave three. So we're looking for, again, a bearish impulse wave to begin a third wave down. Um, if this pattern is correct, then we've got much much lower to go and this will probably coincide with confirmation of a you know a general recession in the western world because there's no way in the world that crude oil will rally against a recessionary background in the west i'm just sorry there's just no way it can be done demand is falling off a cliff even right now you know they're dropping production they're trying to bump the price out up, and all it's all that's happening is collapse in prices. Even with the summertime driving season underway, even with the travel season underway, you know tourists are flocking into Ireland right now. Planes are flying left, right, and centre all over the world, but the oil price keeps going down. <laughs> so it seems well. It remains to be seen whether you know this alternate second wave count actually um, takes over, but for the moment. Um, my eyes are lower in a third wave, so let's see how that goes. For next week, look for this bearish impulse wave to complete, which will signal a third of a third wave decline. So we'll see. As usual, be tracking it on the nightly updates. So get onto the website, join, become a member, and then um, we can converse each night. Uh, I'm actually going to go to the daily count here in the SP. You can see. We've got this wedge pattern, wave one, three waves up, wave two. Uh, we popped above this. Uh, here's the previous fourth wave. So we popped above the previous fourth wave. Here's the 62% retracement. Popped above the 62% retracement. And we completed between 62 and 78.6. So So um, for a large degree second wave, this is probably the area. Uh, this is the area to call a termination on this one. So... Uh, we're, we are completing a second wave. It's a pretty sub, it's a it's a pretty spot on uh, three wave rally. Uh, we've got a second wave lower high. We're we're ready. We're primed here to turn lower, and uh, I'm expecting that 
And I know, I know, everybody's going to say that, you know, I've been bearish forever. But You know, you make your own decisions, but, you know, in the long term, this market is looking horrendous. Uh, but you make your own decisions. I've got the four-hour count here. I can see um, a couple of nice Fibonacci relations, relationships coming into play here. If you take the wave A, the extend, extension of wave A, um, and you take it from the wave B low, so we've got the, uh, this is the, the Fibonacci grid for the, ex, for the wave, the height of wave A, and we extend it off the wave B low, and we've got 44.53. So, wave A equals wave C, almost to a pip. Now stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Wave C here in green equals wave A in green, almost to a pip. Uh, we actually got a high, I've got the hourly count here. We got a high at 44, 47, thereabouts. 44, 47, the projected high for wave C was 44, 53. So, 44, 54. What's that? You know, seven points, eight points in the difference. Um, and we've got a decline off that uh, high. Now, just take that one. That's a data point, okay? So if we take the wave wave C itself and we break it down, if we take the height of wave 1 of C and we project it off the wave 4 low, that gives us a high at 44.31, a projected high for an extension wave 5 at 44.31. Um, we pipped above that high and we turned lower, okay? So the extended rally is done. Now, if we take the Fibonacci channel here, or sorry, not the, the Elliott channel here. So wave two to wave four connected, extended off the wave three high. We have a throw over over the top of the channel and we're turned lower again. Price is now holding below. We've broken through the 50 MA on the four hour chart. And we're holding below that at the moment anyway. So we've got three or four data points there now. Actually, four if you want to. Three waves up in wave two, done. Wave A equals wave C, done. Um, the Elliott channel for wave C, filled, done. Wave one and wave five matched to a Fibonacci um, extension, done. Okay. Internal pattern for wave five. So there's the wave four low. We've got three up in one. I'm looking at an ending diagonal pattern here. So we've got three up in one, three down in two, three up in three, three down in four, three up in five. So that's an ending diagonal. Okay. We have a throw over there above the um, the upper uh, wedge, the upper uh, line of the wedge here. We've got a throw over and we've come down below that uh, the wedge pattern again. So uh, you know, if this is a jaws of death, let's call it, um, to finish a wedge, then the pattern is done. So let's see if the if the market holds below this level today and we continue with the downside. You know, we hold below the uh, 50 MA. We start approaching that 200 MA on the four-hour chart. Um, then I think this rally is cooked and we are turning into wave one. So next week, again, searching for you know, always searching for a top. I'm searching for a top here, looking for five waves down. So let's see. Let's, I think this is this should be it, man. Come on. Uh, the initial decline is is less than satisfactory. I'll give you that much. You know, the decline off that low. Maybe, maybe that's a wave one. Maybe it's a running flat wave two. Who knows? Um, I'm going to allow this time to actually develop. Uh, and actually, oh, you know, let's go to a lower degree. If you take the the height of wave one here, and you extend it off the wave four low, then you get a projected high of 44.25. We popped above that by about 22 points, and we came back down again. So um, they're all data points individually on their own. 
they don't really mean a whole lot. But when they all cluster together like this and they actually start giving a, a, a cluster of um, target levels or target tops, all clustering around the same area, all from different methodologies within the pattern, it's, it's time to start waking up and, you know, at least considering this, um, this idea of a top here. So next week, you know, the hunt remains in place. Okay, so we're on to silver. Let's go to the daily count in silver. Uh, I am still of two minds, you know, on silver, to be quite honest. This alternate count here for, for silver of a large wave A down into, let's say, the August lows last year. Three waves up to a B wave lower high into the, I think it's a March high, eight, sorry, May high, and then five ways down. We could, this alternate count could easily bring us, you know, hey, let's get a conservative, uh, let's get a conservative low on this alternate count here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Some people might scream now from this one, but, you know, hold on to your hats. A conservative low for wave C would be about 1366. So that would be where wave this alternate count wave C actually comes in and we see some sort of a uh, <clears throat> acceleration crash kind of uh, scenario in, a, in silver. I can't rule it out because the pattern is right there in front of my eyes. Like it's three waves down, wave A, three waves up, wave B. We could begin. We could really be beginning a five-wave decline into wave C, and if this internal low here at wave two, if this breaks, if 1990 breaks, you know this market is in a world of trouble. I think. Okay, so it's a four-hour count. Um, there's a couple of alternates for the four-hour count, obviously. So we've got a wave one high. Sorry, the main count is wave one at 26.14, and we're working on wave two now. <clears throat> wave two, there's that 1990 low. 1990 breaks, then the first alternate would be shown on the four hour count here. You know, but if 1990 breaks, I think, especially with the manner that it breaks, if it breaks with an acceleration phase lower, then we could be talking about the larger degree pattern again, alternate pattern. <clears throat> okay, forgive my throat. We'll keep my tea pouring into it. <clears throat> so, I think the last video I done, we were we were still within this B wave um, correction higher. We've pretty much confirmed this turn down into wave C now. So, you know, uh, this week we've got this acceleration phase lower. I think that's probably wave three of C. And here we go. That's the main pattern here. Wave A low, three waves up in wave B, and we're looking at one, two, three, four, five. Go back and check the previous video. I think. We were probably topping out in this B wave somewhere as two weeks ago. So um, we were looking for the reversal down into uh, wave C. And that's pretty much confirmed right now with the break of the wave way low. So we've got wave one and two done. Accelerate lower on wave three. We should probably complete this wave three pretty soon if it's not done already. Um, and then we'll correct sideways in wave four. We'll see how that goes. Um, the internal pattern, depending on which larger degree pattern is actually correct, um, that will probably dictate the size of this correction higher. So if the, the main pattern here is correct, then we'll probably complete this fourth wave somewhere around 2270. Yeah, I don't wanna I don't want to see a break of this wave one level here. So that's 2320. So somewhere between 2270 and 23. Let's say we'll complete wave four and then we'll turn lower again into wave five. And again, I am looking towards about, you know, 21, maybe 2050, 20, 21 for wave C to complete. <clears throat> so that's the outlook for next week in silver. Um, I think I'm going to call it there. If you like what I do, get over to bobbins.org and you'll have the nightly LA wave updates, including tonight. Um, back in action again tonight. And uh, every night. Um, that concludes this week's video update. 
sorry if it's a bit shorter than usual. I'm just uh, a bit drained after the week, to be honest. The last couple of weeks, actually. Um, and as I usually do, I end the video with the presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. People, a lot of people just can't understand the idea of God having a son. All right, they can, a lot of people can say, yes, I do think there is a higher power. You know, creation around yeah, the actual, the existence at all suggests a creator. You know, patterns within existence suggest design. Design comes from creator. And everything does not come from nothing. You know, everything comes from something. You know, that's the law of thermodynamics will dictate that. Everything can't come from nothing. So, if there's a creator, how does, why does an eternal creator need a son? That's a lot of people's, you know, they just can't get the idea of Jesus Christ being the son of God. Well, picture this, the eternal God. Everything exists. He exists outside of creation in eternity. So a creation, this creation bubble that we are in exists within him also. Now, God cannot, the creator God cannot leave eternity. He exists within eternity. So if he wants to interject within time, space, matter, he must come in as within time, space, and matter. So if, if the, let's say the Godhead force comes into time, space, and matter, then it's almost like an express image within time, space, and matter. He himself, God, the creator, does not leave eternity. He comes into time, space, and matter. And if there is a creation within time, space, and matter, that is God, outside of God, that is the Son of God, the express image of God within time, space, and matter. Now, why did God, God need to come into time, space, and matter to sort out humanity? Well, the existence of creation means there was a perfection at the beginning. There was perfection at the beginning. Our DNA traces back to two individuals. You didn't know that, but the human DNA traces back to two individuals. That's been scientifically proven. Those two individuals are Adam and Eve. And they sinned. They missed the mark. They existed with the eternal God in a perfect creation. and they missed the mark and they were always going to miss the mark any human was always going to miss the mark because we were created with free will and why did god create us with free will god created us with free will because love does not exist without free will you know compelled love is not love it has to be uncompelled it has to be it has to come from an uncompelled being so we are uncompelled beings we exist with our own free will. And if you are, you choose to either love God or not love God, that's your choice. And you go into eternity either within the grace of God or outside of the grace of God. And if you decide to go into eternity outside of the grace of God, then you go to a place without God. That's called hell. <sighs> so, eternal God comes into time, space, and matter to live a perfect life, to reconnect us with himself by becoming that final, full, perfect sacrifice to pay for all the sin that was ever done, to heal the wound, to pay in full. And what Jesus said on the cross before he died is, it is finished. The Greek actually translates to paid in full. That's what he said, paid in full. Our sins are paid in full if you put your faith in the right area, and that is Jesus Christ. Put your faith in Jesus today. God can do only amazing things in your life, but it's up to you. You have the free will 